Hello, welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 76. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would absolutely love it if you did. Um, if you haven't ever commented, maybe this is the one you can comment on. And if you haven't ever liked one of my videos, this is one you could like too. Uh, the reason why I'm suggesting these things is because the more interaction you have with my videos that YouTube can see, and the more positive it is, the more that they will decide to show this video to other people and my other videos to other people, which means that more people will see them and more people will get to benefit for, from them, which I'd really love. Thank you very much. Today I have a piece of embroidery to show you. Actually, I've got a couple. Um, and it might be a way to introduce you to a new idea of doing some new way of doing something. Um, I also just wanted to mention perhaps you will know that New South Wales, which is the state of Australia that I live in, is currently being deluged by rain and there is flooding in very, very many places. Uh, where we are, it hasn't really affected us terribly. Um, we haven't had nearly as much rainfall as other places have. Um, however, I was down in Sydney on the weekend and my daughter and I had to find a pick a very careful path back because the normal route that we would take was flooded and we would not have been able to get through. And we don't know when that road's going to be open again. Hmm. Um, the other thing is that there are very many people whose homes uh, who have had to evacuate from their homes and I'm thinking of them and I hope that they're all safe. Um, in a situation like this, if I had to evacuate, and I think I've said this before, with my with the bushfires, if I had to evacuate, I wouldn't take my needlework with me. And the reason why that is, is because people are so much more important than needlework. If I needed to, I could recreate those pieces. I probably never would, but they're just not that important to me. So, yeah, for those of you who do have to evacuate, I hope that the decisions that you make are wise ones and that you um, are safe. You may be considering purchasing one of the supplies packs for my forthcoming book, Friesy and White Work, Dutch Embroidery from Friesland, and hopefully they will be available soon. Hopefully some of them will be available soon, um, certainly in time for when the book arrives, I hope. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I started collecting the supplies for the supplies packs about a year ago, and some of those things I'm still waiting on. Uh, so, I hope you will understand if when the book comes out not all of the supplies packs are able to be supplied yet. Um, it's not because of me being slack, it's I have been trying so very hard to get all these things together for you. Um, I have I think ordered everything now um, but there's just some things that are dragging the chain and that's because of the situation that the world is in. Sometimes it's that the manufacturing of those um, products has stopped because of lockdown and in other places it's because shipping is just majorly disrupted. Um, I've had some things waiting in Germany to try to get to me since about this time last year. They are now on their way but they are sitting waiting having cleared customs to get on a plane to Australia and there's just so few planes coming that they're just sitting there and sitting there. So I don't know when they're going to turn up but hopefully it will be sometime soon hopefully. So the supplies packs will be available. I just don't know exactly when. Some of them will certainly be available right from the beginning, um, but others may take some time for me to actually have all of the things available for them. I apologize for that, but I am absolutely doing the best I can. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, if you're going to pre-order or purchase at any stage a copy of my new book. I'd really like to encourage you to buy it from a small business. So I know that many people have mentioned to me that Amazon is telling them it'll be available at such and such a time. And that probably means they're looking to purchase it on Amazon. I would like to suggest to you that if you don't buy your book from Amazon, Amazon will not die. Their workers will not go hungry because of the lack of your purchase. However, if you choose to purchase instead from a small business such as a bookshop or a needle workshop, they will be so grateful for your purchase. Um, I know that in this current day and age when things are tough for many, small businesses are especially doing it tough and I'd really love to encourage you therefore to support them where you possibly can. Thank you for that. 
Now today, the piece of embroidery that I wanted to show you is this bag. This is a Hardanger bag that I made many years ago. It is not in any of my books. I don't think it's been a project in any magazines. I think I just did it for the fun of it, I think. Mm. I don't know, maybe it's been published. I can't really remember. Oh well. It doesn't look quite like normal Hardanger and that's because it has a chiffon overlay over the um, fabric and then the stitching is worked through both the countered fabric on the back, so the even weave linen, and also through the chiffon. So you could do a similar sort of thing with chiffon or organza or organdy, um, maybe even very fine voils or cambrics if they still exist. I don't think they do. Um, so anything that's very fine and see-through, you could possibly do this technique with. The thing about this technique is that while you can have many of the motifs of Hardanger, you can't have any cut work. We all know how when we're cutting our our threads to do our cut work with just um, a linen or whatever fabric is it is that you're using that they can get furry little whiskers imagine the furry whiskers that you would get if you were also cutting through the fine strands of the chiffon or organ organza fabric it would be nightmarish <laughs> so with this technique I only ever use non cut stitching and my eyelets, I don't work as eyelets. So these are Algerian eyelets here and they're not worked with a hole. They're just basically worked as a star. And along the bottom here, we've got four sided stitch and there's also cable stitch. Neither of them are worked as pulled thread stitches as I normally would. They're worked as surface stitches only. And that's because if we were to pull the threads and open up holes, you might get strands of the chiffon stretching across a hole and it would just end up being a mess and I'd rather not do that. So I instead just use the stitches as I can to create the framework for the design, um, but don't use them as drawn thread stitches. So here we also have um, eight petaled roses. They're not stars, they're roses. They're Utter's blood roses. Um, and there's also some more sat uh, satin stitch down the bottom here. And then across this design, I've also put beads. So there's some Swarovski crystals in the middle of these, and then there's some smaller beads along the side, and that just gives it a nice sparkle. So the reason why I chose to do this with an overlay of chiffon is because it creates a very different effect. Um, it means you can have different colors um, for your fabric and you can have a different surface of your fabric as well because you don't see the countered um, thread fabric quite so much. You can see it a little bit through the, the chiffon, but really not much at all. Um, and so it just creates a very different effect. What it does mean, however, is that the stitching is much, much, much slower because you have to carefully look from the front and the back to make sure your needle is coming out in the place that you want it to. So if you were to try this, and, and I suggest that it's worthwhile to do, um, I would caution you to say it is so much harder and complicated than just doing regular hardanger. And if you're a regular hardanger beginner, I don't suggest you try this yet. Just get a bit more practice first. So I've got another piece here. That's, this is an unfinished one that I started many years ago. Um, this is, or will one day, maybe, maybe not, become a, a lampshade. Um, and probably it's meant to go that way up, actually. I think I would have that around the bottom. And you can see here that I've used a patterned organza fabric. Um, and I've worked the embroidery on it. And I just wanted the interplay of the pattern with the embroidery as well. It's also a shot fabric, which I don't know if you can see that um, from the angle that I'm holding this on, but it's a, a sort of a, a yellowish color in one direction and a bluish color in the other direction, which also gives you an interplay of color with the stitching as well. 
And you can see that I have put lines of tacking across the whole of the fabric and that is so that the two fabrics work much more as one rather than independently. Otherwise you can find that it shifts as you stitch and that's a pain in the neck. Another way I've also done this technique is to use um, a double-sided or a well a double-sided um, adhesive Flysofix um, so that you've got the two fabrics with the adhesive sandwiched in between and you iron them together and then they work as the one fabric. Uh, when, I was, when I do that I still try to be as careful with it as possible because as we know that those fabrics can often delaminate from one another if you're not careful. Um, it does it can tend to make it a little bit harder to get the needle through because you're not going through just two layers of fabric, you're also going through the adhesive as well. But that is another way of doing it, particularly for small pieces. Um, though I can imagine that it would have made life so much easier if I hadn't had to tack across the whole of this piece of fabric for my very large one. So that on the back of that, you can see that I've got the linen fabric and I'd say that's probably like a 28 count linen and it's a similar sort of color to the fabric on the front. Um, I chose that because I didn't want the color behind interfering with the color on the front. Um, if I wanted to though I could use a white on the back and that would give a different color effect than if I used the similar color on the back. So there's all sorts of things that you can play with in terms of color and texture and pattern with this. Um, so I just hope that that inspires you to, to perhaps try something new. Um, it's something to at least inspire you. So thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time. Bye.